Bowel obstruction is a term that can refer to simple constipation or more serious conditions where the bowel is blocked and uh, medical or surgical intervention is required to relieve the blockage. So uh, this is a common presentation in the ER. Uh, somebody uh, often will present with uh, abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, um, and uh, inevitably the absence of flatulence or bowel movement, obviously, since the bowel is blocked. So uh, there are chronic conditions where people haven't uh, gone to the bathroom in days and they'll come to the emergency room complaining of not being able to go to the bathroom, or there are the more acute conditions that are usually associated with more pain uh, and these people uh, may, may have only not been able to go to the bathroom for a day, but, but they're in a lot of pain and they know that they're not able to go to the bathroom. So there's ileus, which is, uh, is usually referring to a problem with motility, and then there's a true obstruction where, where there's something blocking it, whether it be uh, intraluminal blockage, such as a fecal lith or some kind of a foreign body or, uh, or a growth within the lumen or sometimes you can get blockage from outside of the lumen either by a uh, adhesion from a prior surgery or often from some kind of a neoplasm. And it's important to differentiate whether, or not whether this is happening in the small bowel versus the large bowel uh, both for differential diagnosis and for uh, treatment. So in the small bowel, the most, most common causes of blockage are either mechanical or functional blockages, which we kind of mentioned before. The mechanical uh, blockages include adhesions when uh, scar tissue pulls the, pulls the bowel uh, or uh, puts a kink in the bowel. Incarcerated hernias, where the where a piece of the bowel has uh, gone through a hernia hole and has either uh, twisted or or been kinked in and uh, it, it doesn't allow uh, anything to pass through the bowel. And then cancers. And appendicitis can also call, cause uh, bowel blockage as well just from the inflammation. And uh, appendicitis also can can cause a uh, bowel contracture, which leads us to uh, functional problems like a paralytic ileus, which can be associated with uh, some kind of infection or inflammation, and or it also could be caused by drugs. The most common cause of uh, paralytic ileus would be um, pain medications and, and other drugs that are... Uh, that cause the small bowel to lose muscle tone. Inflammatory bowel disease also can cause a, a functional uh, bowel blockage. In the large bowel, there's volvulus where you get a twisting of the bowel. This is uh, going to be more common in um, in older people. Then there's diverticulitis which could be a true diverticulum, like a Meckel's diverticulum, or it could be from diverticulosis. And again, colorectal cancer is, is probably the most uh, frightening, the most important uh, thing on your differential diagnosis to, to rule out. And then you can also get a colonic ileus, also known as Ogilvy syndrome. Here is a picture of the bowel. Um, here is a list of things that we want to take into consideration on a, an exam. So uh, uh, bowel distension is, uh, is a common cause of, or a common characteristic of acute bowel obstruction. Visi visible hernias are something we need to, to look out for to uh, add that into the differential diagnosis. If you can see any type of a mass sticking out, of course, that's something that we want to take into consideration. And then we look for scars. Uh, and uh, 
Of course, you can imagine that we're looking for scars because uh, that could be a sign that there are adhesions underneath that may be causing our obstruction. On the exam, we also auscultate uh, to make sure there are no bowel sounds. If there are bowel sounds, um, normal bowel sounds, then uh, you, you may want to look into uh, another diagnosis besides bowel obstruction, but a lot of times you will have uh, some high-pitched sounds in incomplete bowel obstruction, <coughs> and that can also help you to localize the obstruction. Percussion can tell us if uh, we have a tympanic bowel or tympanic abdomen, which lead us to the idea that there are there is um, fluid in the peritoneal cavity. Um, sorry, the peritoneal cavity, and uh, and can help us start to think about things like uh, perforation, which is also a possibility with some of these uh, causes of, of bowel obstruction. Palpate the bowel to see if you can find any masses, uh, neoplasms or um, infl inflamed spots. And uh, we also do a rect rectal exam. Now for most cases of bowel obstruction, it's uh, gonna be higher up than you can reach with a rectal exam. But there are some cases where you'll have a, a uh, rectal mass, which could be causing the bowel obstruction, and it's always just a good idea to, to rule that out. So we also want to send some lab tests out. You do a CBC, including white blood cells, a hemoglobin hematocrit, and platelets. This can tip us off to the idea of infection or inflammation with the white blood cell count. Hemoglobin hematocrit can give us an idea if we have some bleeding uh, within the intestines. And uh, platelets can also uh, make us think about uh, bleeding and uh, other comorbid uh, conditions. Electrolytes can uh, help us know if, if we, again, if we are, are bleeding, that can be a um, a sign of, uh, or a reason that we have changes in electrolyte levels. Um, a hypochloremic, hypokalemic alkalosis is something that we're often going to see with these bowel obstruction cases because most of these people are throwing up, or a lot of these people are throwing up. And uh, when you're throwing up, of course, you, th you throw up a lot of acid. So you get a... Uh, uh, hypochloremic, hypokalemic alkalosis. Uh, the the hypokalemia is a uh, metabolic reaction to the uh, to the alkalotic state, uh, where the kidneys start start uh, getting rid of potassium in order to keep hydrogen ions. You also want to do a BUN creatinine uh, a urinalysis. Uh, liver function tests, amylase and lipase, these mostly can help us rule out uh, other causes of bowel problems or other causes of abdominal pain that uh, might be uh, on the differential diagnosis list. Then you want to take them in and get some uh, pictures taken. So you do uh, proximal bowel dilation. Uh, or on plain film, you look for proximal bowel dilation. You look for air fluid le levels. In a, in a bowel obstruction, a true bowel obstruction, you'll often see a distal collapse. So if it's completely, um, if it's completely obstructed, then anything after the obstruction will uh, be be empty and, and collapse usually. Small bowel dil dilation with air in the large bowel is something you want to look for. And then a string of beads sign, which is uh, associated with the, the collapse that we were talking about. Um, we also want to take a CT scan. The CT is, is most sensitive, and it can help us to show the cause and uh, can help us to 
better figure out what our treatment is going to be. So on the CT, you'll be able to see if we've got adhesions that are causing problems. Uh, I don't know what I meant by writing transition of bowel caliber. Oh, I think that that's talking about the distal collapse that we mentioned. And uh, feces sign. You can actually see the feces in the, in the CT. On the CT, uh, there's something that they call an apple core lesion. You can also see these with a, a, a barium swallow, but you probably don't want to be doing barium swallows if, there's, if you uh, suspect a bowel obstruction, at least a complete bowel obstruction. So uh, this will be where you can see uh, you can see a, a narrowed spot that is constricted by a tumor which surrounds the, the bowel. And uh, there's also a, a sign you can see on CT. Uh, it's a closed loop or a U-shape due to uh, tethering. So if you have uh, an adhesion or something that's pulling the bowel to the side, you, the side, you can see this U-shape. Um, some of the complications that that can happen with uh, these small bowel obstructions are uh, ischemia. If you uh, if you have the bowel uh, that is overly distended or or overly inflamed, you can lose blood supply. Portal venous air is a situation that you want to to worry about. You can actually get uh, air uh, up through the uh, bile ducts into the liver and uh, so the <coughs> that's uh, a s another sign that you can sometimes see on um, on uh, imaging perforation is an it is a complication that you need to be aware of that can be potentially life-threatening and uh, mesenteric venous air, uh, the pressure, um, and I should have said it this way, under portal venous air uh, too, but there's the, the pressure from the bowel obstruction can uh, push air into the venous system, uh, not through the bile ducts, like I uh, erroneous, erroneously said on the portal venous air. And uh, ischemic bowel, which we talked about. So. What do we do to treat this? Well, of course, it's going to depend on what's causing the obstruction. The indications for uh, non-operative treatment would be if uh, there's fever, uh, peritonitis, uh, incarcerated hernia, um, increased white blood cell, and failed non-operative management. Um, sorry, OK. So these, let me just fix this here. Okay, so this is our indications for operative management. So the reasons that we would want to do an operation immediately is if we have these things that I just mentioned. Uh, if you have fever, peritonitis, incarcerated hernia, uh, increased white blood cells, and... Uh, or if we've tried to do non-operative management and um, and we haven't been able to uh, fix the situation, really the main reason you don't go in and do um, an operation is if you've had prior abdominal surgery and there's adhesions, you know what's going on, and so you you try and management manage it without uh, without surgery. These are the things we just talked about for uh, reasons you do surgery. And uh, so th if we don't want to go in and treat this surgically, we can do an NG tube, we can stop feeding, um, and uh, in if necessarily give uh, total parental nutrition. And and just along with that fluid resuscitation and then of course put a Foley catheter in uh, and monitor uh, the 
liquid output. If we do want to do uh, an operation, you can do both the open midline incision and, and laparoscopic surgery. In either case, you're gonna you're gonna uh, run the bowel, which just means you're gonna follow the the loops of the bowel um, up to the from the down to the terminal ilium up to the ligament of trites. You identify the dilated bowel and the decrest decompressed bowel. So basically, you you see the the area where um, where the obstruction is by finding the spot where it's dilated and then on the other side it's decompressed. You're going to cut down adhesions that could be causing the problem from uh, prior surgeries and uh, resect necrotic bowel, get rid of anything that's dead um, and then you, you re-anastomose it, you get it back together. So just a word on how that works. There's there's different types of staplers that are used for reanastomosis. In in some of these cases, if if there is, uh, for example, um, for if there is infection, then you might not be able to reanastomose immediately. You might have to do a colostomy. Uh, either a temporary or a permanent colostomy, uh, hopefully a temporary colostomy. But uh, in either case, you're going to be, or most cases, you'll you use uh, a stapler to um, to cut and reanastomose the ends of the bowel. So they have different types of staplers that I think I, I talk about under colon surgery. So there's the GIA and the um, and the TIA staplers and um, and the end-to-end -end staplers. So I, if you want to learn more about that, you can go to the the colon cancer video. In post-operative period, uh, IV fluid. You. Uh, Keep them on the NG tube, so we're we're not going to be giving these people f food, obviously, immediately if they've got uh, uh, anastomosis in there. And you can uh, you can remove the NG tube when the output is less than 200 cc's per shift. So uh, basically, if you're not sucking stuff up anymore, and oral liquids after the patient passes gas so you you need to wait until you till they hear hear some gas coming through and the complications of course that are associated with are, are abscess leak infection bleeding and then of course regular surgical complications like DVT and UTI from having a catheter in and pulmonary complications from anesthesia um, and these, this stuff does happen. Uh, it's uh, it's not like other surgeries where where these uh, complications are, are pretty low on the list. You know, infection and bleeding uh, and leakage of the bowel all could happen on pretty much any given uh, reanastomosis of of a bowel. So it's something to monitor for very carefully.